Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to press on the notification uh, and also subscribe to us right here. And our guest for today is Sharon Wee. And there you have it. Welcome to the RSS with HC with myself, Rasi Saleh, and my partner in crime, Harish Dill. And today we've got someone special. I'm going to show you a picture of her. She looks, some people have been saying that she looks really, really corporate in this picture. What do you think, Harish? Huh? Uh, I, I, I love the fact that we are looking at the other side of Sharon and not the, you know, um, her in her squash attire, Sharon. So, yeah. So, uh, I'll tell you what, let, let's be fair to her. Let's go ahead and introduce her. She's, she's right here with us, uh, obviously online and doing the MCO. Hi, Sharon, how are you? Hi, uh, Rashid and uh, Harish, my dearest old friend. Not so old, but kawan lama lah. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> now, um, what we've seen on, on Facebook uh, is that you've been busy uh, cooking. And I, I know prior to this, you did write in your post that you hadn't done this, obviously, because you've been busy. And now... Now is the time to be able to, to be doing it. But first, obviously, um, let's get Harris um, out there and asking you some questions because I'm actually looking forward to just hearing from you this time. <laughs> actually, Sharon, I mean, uh, for viewers, Sharon is uh, the former professional uh, squash uh, player. Uh, she grew up with the likes of Nicole and, you know, um, uh, Delia Arnold. Correct, Sharon? Yes, yes. Yeah, and... Uh, and uh, she's now uh, made fame as I mean, in, in recent time as a TV presenter. So you've been seeing her face uh, quite often on TV. But more importantly, I think uh, many people would like to know. So how's the sambal uh, blachan? <laughs> you've been cooking, correct? Well, uh, you know, being a Melaka, nyonya orang Melaka. Well, I take this time, MCO time, to really learn my mom's uh, recipe, nyonya recipe. So my favorite food is nyonya fish so i thought hey you know wherever i go i must cook some fish so that's why i must learn and uh, the other thing is um, a few weeks ago i learned how to cook pong te la, ayam pong te. it's very delicacy of nyonya food uh, but at the same time for me you know um, it's very sentimental value all these recipes right from mom so i have to write down and in years to come it will be a great memory la. but so far so good the cooking, the cutting, semua sedap-sedap lah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to invite us over one of these days as well, especially when the MCO is over. When, when Rashid cooks as well, he cooks as raw laksa. I think that's the only dish he cooks, right? Ah, I see, I cook other stuff. It's just that, you know, I, I've, I've let my wife cook during this MCO because, you know, she's been busy with the kids and everything. That's my excuse anyway. Uh, but yeah, but uh, on, on, onwards to, 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 Sharon, to Sharon first. But um, yeah. a lot of people, obviously, uh, you know, it's been documented that you've, you've how you, 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 you've transitioned to, uh, you know, to, from a squash player to a TV presenter. But tell us a bit about how it all started because... Not much is said about that and why you got into it. And, you know, people have talked about your national squash player, this and that and the other. But how did you really pick it up? Um, very interesting. I've always been a very sports person. Um, I think I remember when I was six years old, my dad brought me for hash run, you know, night bukit, turun bukit. I end up being, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, finish earlier than my dad. So I do not know how. <laughs> But again, you know, since primary school, I've been exposed to a lot of sports. I love it. I play badminton, uh, tennis, uh, sprinter, school sprinter, uh, netball as well. Uh, I only take up squash when I was 11 years old in Malacca, actually from my uncle, my uncle's friend. Um, his name is Roslan, Coach Roslan. Um, at that time, uh, Malacca uh, State Coach said, hey, bring someone, uh, someone young, you know, for our Malacca squash program so I went there it's because coordination is there power is there because I'm already an athlete so it took me a week or so just to get used to it and when I was 13 I already represent Malaysia in my age group can you imagine that wow it's yeah <laughs> but wow. I love sports 
I, I truly love sports because uh, again, you know, it's um, it's really character building for me and for all the young people out there and for everybody. Yeah. But Sharon, what about the transition from a sports person <laughs> from being in front of the camera to behind the camera? <laughs> Ah, uh, that is another very interesting thing. Well, you know, my squash career, I represented Malaysia for 20 years and yeah. I'm very glad and I'm very proud to represent Malaysia as a Malaysian. Um, and, you know, life after sports can be very interesting and challenging, actually. You need a lot of preparation. I've actually written an article about, you know, how do you prepare yourself for career after sports and... Uh, few points of it, of course, is education. While doing elite sports, you must have your education, get your degree or diploma, something like that. Secondly, you have to be ready what you want to do after, you know, sports in any yeah. industry. And connection, uh, getting help is very important as well. So my transition into broadcasting, uh, of course, it started, um, I stopped playing in the end of 2010. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, a TV station, um, thank to them, they trust in me, that brought me in mm -hmm. and said, why not you try, you know? So, mm -hmm. because my, uh, I'm very comfortable in front of camera naturally and mm -hmm. I could speak uh, fluently especially in uh, Bahasa Melayu lah. Sebab mm -hmm. boleh cakap dalam Bahasa Melayu, diorang kata, eh, jom datang lah buat jadi komentator, pengulas, as TV presenter. So, I got... Uh, click on it but again it's all about hard work because it is a new zone for you yeah. you know you want to change and change is never easy but as yeah. long as you work extremely hard you are committed mm -hmm. be responsible and uh, being mm -hmm. humble which i all learn from mm -hmm. sports itself my my life in sports right all that i transfer it to my new careers not mm -hmm. necessarily broadcasting, but some other things as a coach, yeah. as a, you know, entrepreneur, as a, a corporate trainer. Mm -hmm. As long as, you know, my advice to other athletes who are transitioning to mm -hmm. a new career after sports, if you use whatever, uh, you know, uh, principles in sports that you have to new life, mm -hmm. then you'll be okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I remember when you first joined, I think in 2010, it was just before I, I left. And it was, it was interesting because I think it was really good to have uh, someone who knew the sport inside out and give a, a totally different uh, aspect of, of how, how, I mean, in, in um, the other side of the world, or rather, you know, abroad, they, they already have that. But we, we were just, at that time, getting sportsmen to get into sports broadcasting. Yeah. And you were one of the early ones. I mean, they used to have it in football. But other sports, very rare. And so you were one of those rarities that, that you know, took the plunge. And you knew, you knew I remember your face like, I can't believe you Ayla. But you just took it and you, and you just went ahead with it. Irrespective of what people thought of you. And you were very, you know, I think it was just like your, your, your squash. It was like, I'm going to be very narrow-minded. Whether I, I do well or not, I will learn. And that was really yeah. great. And now, look at where you are. I mean, a shining example of, of, uh, of how, you know, how you can move forward with your career from from yeah, you know a yeah. successful um, sports career as well. But my question is, if it wasn't if it wasn't squash, what would you have done instead? <laughs> Actually, my ambition when I was young is to be a lawyer. Then, oh, really? <laughs> then okay. I became lawyer bureau. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, then I uh, went to university and get graduated in business and uh, worked for a few months in audit firm. But my dream is to become professional squash player. I went for it with lots of support from family, friends, association, organizations, you know, um, National Sports Council and, and all that gave me courage to go for my dream that then I became professional squash player. That was my 10 years of my career, you know, hitting around, traveling around the world uh, in the name of Malaysia. And I... Look, looking back, I would never change anything because I have achieved my dream. But again, you know, there are more dreams that you can achieve. Um, well, if not an elite or professional squash player, I guess, you know, um, 
I think I should stick to lawyer, you know, <laughs> because that was my childhood dream. <laughs> but, but but not not too late to continue, you know. I mean, you can you can always pick it up. I I know people who've done it at the age of sixty. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I think I think you know uh, I think life goes on. I think yeah. now my passion is of course to give back to the youth, to the young ones, yeah. uh, in terms of you know uh, being a role model in in squash and other sports as well. Being a trainer, a leadership trainer as well, and sharing in platform like that, you know, about my experience and and yeah, you know, uh, inspire. Uh, the young ones and also the whole Malaysia. I think that's uh, my path, lah. You know, as well, well as uh, continue my broadcasting career and other businesses as well. Now, I think I love to learn. I think that's how we grow, right? <laughs> yes. Um, well, just well, well, that, a quick, a quick yeah. thing before we wrap up. I mean, how has um, the MCO affected you? Uh, obviously, you we, we talked about your cooking, but uh, as as an individual, I mean, a lot of people are going through. Uh, changes during during this MCO what how, how has it affected you and how has it you know uh, made any changes for you uh, personally uh, it is very interesting it happened in this lifetime my lifetime because it's a global crisis and uh, yeah it affects a lot of people but at the same time looking at positive side personally for me it's time for us to do a lot of reflection of who we are uh, about ourselves and to the world, to the people around us. Uh, me personally, not just cooking, I've done a lot of exercises at home, duduk rumah, do a lot of exercises, get myself fit. Um, of course, uh, improve on my IT knowledge, <laughs> learn here and there, and do a lot of readings about current news because you want to be up to date of what's happening in the world. Um, how does it affect me um, it actually not just uh, mentally but physically and emotionally as well so this is when we need to be strong together and um, you know being a proud Malaysian I should I should say that um, we need to stay together to go through and fight this coronavirus uh, COVID-19 and I believe that as Malaysian uh, we beautiful Malaysian from different races and culture. This is why Malaysia is Malaysia. We are very, very um, known for the multiracial Malaysian that we can stay together, together mm. and, and fight, fight this together and get out from this successfully and move on in our life successfully as well. And I really believe in that. Sharon, I, I have to ask you this, yeah. Um, as a former athlete, now you know that the whole calendar of this year has been severely disrupted because of the pandemic. And uh, as a at, former athlete, elite athletes have their periodization, uh, and that is pretty much messed up as well. Uh, what do you think of uh, our elite athletes? I'm, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to tournaments, but no way they're going to be having any tournaments for the next six months or so. Um, should they just forget about 2020 and concentrate on 2021? What, what are your thoughts? I think uh, as uh, elite national athlete before, it's very important for us to keep fit no matter what because um, it's this is the test whether only the most disciplined will survive during this MCO, specifically for elite athletes and athletes, competitive mm -hmm. athletes. Yeah. Because... Um, even one week or two weeks doing nothing uh, will decrease your fitness, your strength, your power. Because for elite athletes, even decrease of 0.1% will make a difference whether you are a champion or the second one. You yeah. see? So I think um, it will affect a lot uh, of athletes actually. So I hope that our Malaysian athletes, wherever you are at home, ke, kat mana mana, follow your coach's program and keep fit. And maybe, you know, in periodization, maybe this is the time for you uh, to maintain uh, your fitness um, and other, other things, strength, power. Um, you can make it as um, an active rest period. 
Mm-hmm. Because some athlete yeah. has trained so much the last two months and maybe this is an active rest period or at least maintenance. But I believe that the coaches after this MCO will cow cow lah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really put the athletes uh, on to ground their paces, and really yeah. tekan them. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know that our rugby coach at the club is looking forward to seeing the boys back on the field because we asked him uh, uh, the other day, so what, what are you looking forward to the most? I said, yeah, pushing the boys and shouting at them. <laughs> so I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think the coaches as well, you know, they get stressed because uh, especially Olympics at 2020 Tokyo this year being postponed to next year in July. Mm, yeah. um, actually, in the modern history of 124 uh, years of uh, Olympics, actually, uh, only three times Olympic has been cancelled because of war, but never been postponed. So this is the very first time Olympic Summer Olympics being postponed to from this year to next year. Um, so there are good things and advantage and disadvantage for elite athletes. Some because they have worked so hard for the last uh, three years and a half, you know, to prepare for July 2020. Um, now they have to start their periodization again to prepare for 2021. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, how about their motivation? How, can their body uh, accept the extra one year of hard training? Uh, mm-hmm. But the good thing is, uh, for I think a lot of athletes, um, it's time for them to have more time to train, especially mm-hmm. mentally, emotionally, going through this uh, COVID-19 at least for them to prepare for Olympics uh, next year. Mm. And for Malaysian Olympian who has qualified and some going to qualify soon, hopefully, I think they are in good hands. Um, MSN, ISN, KBS, the coaches and associations, um, OCM has worked very hard together. And the fans now, like us, right? Um, the Malaysian has always uh, support uh, Malaysian athletes and generally Malaysian sports because I think sports, personally for me, is the greatest platform to unite Malaysian. And I hope uh, that will continue. Well, you know, thank you very much, uh, Sharon, for joining us. That was really, really educational, especially uh, for the audiences out there as well. But um, please, uh, probably... We'll invite you again one of these days because uh, you definitely have a lot to uh, impart knowledge as well. Um, um, Harish, thank you very much again for, for being with us. Uh, do go on to uh, 2213 uh, if you need to get more news and probably abuse from Greg Nunes on his MCO diaries because he's been writing some real gems, uh, especially uh, yesterday and today. But yeah, so don't forget to go on there as well. Again, once again, thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, for joining us and for you guys don't forget to uh, uh, do write your comments turn on the notification as well as subscribe to us because and finally don't forget to say thank you for Harish and I to Amnig our apparel uh, sponsor a must name in gear and a Malaysian product you have been watching the RSS with HD